nasty kid who was a kid. We were gonna put him in this world with all these gods and grown-ups, and he needed to be really different than them. It's a legendary role and far from easy to book. Well, How many auditions flips. did you have? Eight. Whether they were too handsome, too young, or just not ready, these 20 actors missed out on the role of a lifetime. Who were they? There are some pretty stellar performers ahead. You'll never believe which Oscar award winner actually turned down the gig. Number one, we almost had the king himself. Timothy Chalamet is one of the busiest actors around. Yes. Performing an incredible range of roles. So it's no surprise that when Marvel and Sony were looking for their new Spidey, Chalamet was a solid contender, even if the actor wasn't so confident. I read twice and I left sweating in a total panic. The actor did make the shortlist, but it just wasn't meant to be. Though Tom Holland has had some words to say about what the future might hold. I think it'd be good to bring him in as an FOS and then he kind of becomes bad. bad. Holland and Chalamet in one movie? Sign us up. He'd be a good villain. Yeah. yeah. Number two. From one star to another, the sex education actor got very far in the process, even getting to do a screen test with Robert Downey Jr., but life took him on another path. And so in the case of Spider-Man, uh, I did sex ed because I, I wouldn't have been able to do both of those at the same time. Losing out on a part like this can be tough, but Butterfield was able to take a look at the bigger picture. Tom did some amazing things with Peter, and he had an entirely different kind of portrayal of him. And I think it worked so well in the universe and, uh, and, and in, the, in, in that part. And I don't think I could do it. Number three, before 13 Reasons Why, he could have been Spider-Man. Dylan Minnette's career hasn't suffered from not getting that gig by any means. And he's been able to come to terms with why it didn't work out. To be honest, it was a time where I wasn't necessarily like seeking it out really. Acting professionally so young comes with its pressures too. I feel like I wasn't at a point in my career, in my life, where I could feel like I was fully ready to commit to something like that anyway. So I don't think I gave it my all or my best. At the end of the day, Minette stands Holland as much as we do. I think Tom Holland would have always gotten the part. He was meant to be that part. He's the best Spider-Man, I think. Number four, another Londoner? Sounds good. Charlie Rowe and Tom Holland are around the same age, both auditioned to play Peter Parker, and they were the only two who actually got to the point of getting two separate screen tests with RDJ. Of course, it wasn't fun to find out he didn't get the part, but he took the news in stride and let the world know with a tweet. Well done at Tom Holland 1996. Glad that Tom's a mate, pleased for him. I thought I could have made quite a good Spider-Man. Number five. We almost got a Canadian Spider-Man? The up-and-coming actor has been working steadily and made it to the shortlist when the hunt for Spider-Man was on. Kind of a big deal. While it didn't pan out, his career has not slowed down and we have no doubt we'll be seeing a lot more of this skilled actor. Number six. It's not every day an actual teenager auditions to play a teenager. Judah Lewis was only 14 years old when he auditioned, making him the perfect age to be Peter Parker, but not quite the right age to play a Marvel superhero. Being so young, just the chance to be in the room is exciting. Just another step in the journey. Number seven, say hello to the youngest person to audition to play Spider-Man. Technically, Matt Lintz was the absolute youngest to audition for the coveted role, being born just one day later than Judah Lewis. He was one of the final actors in the running, but like Lewis, he wasn't ready to play the role at that age. But his MCU dreams didn't go away. He wasn't Spider-Man, but he was the perfect person to play Bruno Corelli in the Disney Plus series, Miss Marvel. Number eight, two stabs at playing Spider-Man, but no dice in this case. Logan Lerman was one of the first actors considered when Mark Webb was set to direct the first Amazing Spider-Man, and the fans were living for it. In the end, the negotiations didn't really work out. This rejection was one the actor had to deal with more than once, though. When Sony and Marvel teamed up to reboot the character, Lerman was tossed into the mix as an option, but by that point, he was older than the team had wanted to cast. So close and yet, so far. Now this we would love to see. Acting from an early age, there was no question Josh Hutcherson had the chops needed to play the part, and the actor was definitely at a point in his career where he was ready to move into the big leagues. And with what better part? It's just an honor. It's really cool to be considered for that. His screen test shows a pretty incredible performance, backed with a load of passion for the franchise. I grew up watching the originals. The originals, you know, the ones with Tobey Maguire. They came out when I was 10 years old. However, this Peter wasn't the right fit. But PETA? That's another story. Number 10. Who's that? 
just a star on the rise. Alden wasn't really known when he began his Spidey audition process, but that didn't mean he wasn't ready. The actor got to meet with Mark Webb, and he was brought into audition for The Amazing Spider-Man 2 as well, except to play Harry Osborn instead. While neither worked out, his career definitely started looking up when he booked playing Han Solo. Number 11. Wait, isn't that Pietro? He is now, but before Avengers Age of Ultron came around, Aaron Taylor Johnson was a popular pick to play Peter Parker in The Amazing Spider-Man. He made the short list, but once Andrew Garfield got the part, the actor moved on with other projects, like Godzilla. It wasn't the end of his superhero dreams, though, since he did, of course, join the MCU and made his mark as Quicksilver. Number 12. Tom Riddle turned Peter Parker? We're intrigued. Frank Delane was seriously considered, getting a meeting with Mark Webb and all to discuss the possibility of working together. Delane is a great actor, and getting a meeting is awesome, but it just wasn't the part. Ultimately, he wasn't the right fit. Number 13. Billy Elliot, is that you? Jamie Bell became a star playing Billy Elliot in the movie in 2000, and just like another Billy Elliot, hey Tom. He gave an amazing audition and got to the screen test phase, coming extremely close to nabbing that job. Not every Billy can become a Peter, though. But we have no doubt Bell probably would have slayed those stunts. Number 14. And hello, Harry Osborn. Sam Raimi and James Franco were pretty tight, so Franco felt hopeful going into his Peter Parker screen test, and the call he got afterwards… well, it wasn't really the one he was hoping for. Raimi was able to soften the blow, though, by giving the actor a straight offer to play the Harry Osborn. It definitely worked out since he got to perform such an iconic role, especially for the third film when he took center stage. Number 15. He was ready to save the day. The truth of the matter is, is in the end, he's… he's Spider-Man. Tobey Maguire had already secured his role as Spider-Man, but after suffering an injury while filming Seabiscuit, there was a chance a new actor would need to step in and Jake Gyllenhaal started training. The actor was just waiting for the go to dive into the Spider-Man sequel, but the OG managed to make it back. A loss for sure, but instead of replacing another actor, Gyllenhaal got to bring his own character to Mysterio and Tom Holland's Spider-Man. And thank goodness, because what would these bros do without each other? I was up against another actor, there was something that happened that possibly could have happened that didn't happen, but maybe it would have, you know. Number 16. Sometimes you just know a role isn't for you. Heath Ledger's agent Steve Alexander reported he was the number one choice to play Spider-Man in the first Sam Raimi film, but knowing it was such a huge franchise and not having much of a personal history with it, Ledger believed that if he played the part, he'd be taking somebody else's dream away. That's a pretty good reason to reject a part even if it is Spider-Man. Number 17. From Titanic to the streets of New York, Leo was ready for anything. Shortlisted to take on the superhero in Sam Raimi's movie, Leo was oh so close, but what did it in the end? His wildly handsome good looks. There were no hard feelings though, since the actor did get to celebrate one of his best friends getting the gig. Number 18. Winning awards, getting lots of amazing offers, Wes Bentley is no stranger. After doing American Beauty, Wes Bentley was on a roll, but he didn't want to get ahead of himself. I didn't want to go there because I believed what I did in American Beauty was special, and I had higher expectations for myself to do something like that again. Bentley passed on pursuing the part, even though it hurt. I regret not doing them, and they're painful to watch sometimes. But they're a reminder of my struggle. If I were to get those opportunities again, I'd know exactly how to handle them. Number 19. What did you do last summer? He didn't spend it playing Spider-Man. But that doesn't mean he didn't come awfully close when Sam Raimi was getting his team together. The actor did a screen test and Sony was a fan, but eventually those conversations faded and by that point, Raimi knew he wanted Toby for the role. Number 20. Last, but definitely not least, Sam Raimi needed a Spider-Man and Scott Speedman was a solid contender and with his being so popular, at the time, the fans were living for it. He missed out on this franchise, but it made him totally available for his role in the Underworld films instead. So many great actors to consider, but in the end, we've loved getting to see the portrayal of the beloved character from some amazing performers, especially when they're all together. Who would you have liked to see play Spider-Man? 